We're here on Highland now. We're going to talk Ulster Under-20 Football Championship. And I'm delighted to say I've got men from two of the counties that are participating in this coming Friday's semi-final. From a Donegal point of view, Frank Craig of the Donegal News joins us. And uh, getting the thoughts out of the Farney County of Monaghan, John McCaffrey from Northern Sound FM. Gentlemen, you're welcome to the, uh, the airwaves of Highland once again. Thanks very much. Thank you very welcome. much, Shane. Well, Sean, you're the visitor, so I think we'll we'll, we'll let you go. We'll let you go first. Uh, is it a great one over Derry and the, and the only game that you played in the competition so far? What's the feeling now going into this one, Sean? Yeah, well, obviously there'd be a bounce coming up the back of that, particularly the fact that they had to travel up to, to Celtic Park to get that win as well. And it's a very unusual, unique grade of football and competition this one because the, it's the only game that they had obviously with all the lockdown and all that was going on even speaking to the manager Andy Callan afterwards he acknowledged I think they had three challenge games owing to the dates that was made available to them whenever they did return back to training so it was fairly evident particularly for the first maybe half of that game that, that there was a ring rustiness to the team to, the, to both teams and it kind of then opened up and, and, and developed into a better game, particularly during the course of the second half. There was less errors, less, less handling errors and passing errors and stuff like that. So th there's a bounce, definitely. Any day you go out, particularly a knockout championship football, particularly at this grade of football, because you don't know what to expect. There's little or no form to go on. So that they'd, they'd be confident, naturally enough. You reach an Ulster semi-final in, in any grade of football or competition yet you have to be confident going into it and as I say the big thing was going to Celtic Park getting the win against that Derry team and preparing now obviously to take on Donegal then this weekend Yeah and I suppose Frank I'll bring you and that's what makes this championship so exciting there's a there's a certain unknown quantity about the whole thing given that there's been no league format and all you're relying on is rumours of challenge games yeah, without a doubt, Ocean. And I think, you know, in most competitions and in most grades, particularly in Ulster, you know, you dread being drawn in a preliminary round. But I would say, you know, secretly Donegal were probably delighted at that time because they probably knew Armagh weren't, you know, maybe at the level of the likes of obviously a Monaghan, Derry or, or whatever. So they got that there maybe trial run against what was a poor Armagh that night in Balbeth, I think, 117 to Nod Knight is finished. So, I mean, going into the Tyrone game, at least they had that there extra mileage under the belt. And I think it made all the difference that night in Oma because obviously Donegal looked by far the better team for, for large periods. But Tyrone, you know, in the last quarter, came storming back into it. Two points in arrears going into injury time. A brilliant save by Dahi Roberts, his second on the night, you know, kept their under 20 aspirations alive, washing. So, you know, Donegal have mixed the very good with the very bad, you know, over the two games. And I'm just in the very bad, maybe it's a wee bit hypercritical on under 20s. But that last quarter against Tyrone, where they coughed up 1 1, allowed a team that was beat back into it. That's probably been the main concern for Gary this week. But listen, again, anytime you score a victory over Tyrone, whether it's senior, under 20, by any means, as long as you get over the line by a point, as long as that one is secured, that's what he'd be most happy about. So listen, I think Monaghan obviously are a step up again, simply because, I mean, we've watched them at under 18 or minor grade over the last three or four years. They've been particularly strong. I think they've won it in 2019, 2020. Maybe, Sean, you'll correct me, but I think Donegal might have taken on Monaghan in 2018 in Balbuffet. Had been leading by three or four points in the second half. Monaghan came storming back into it and turned the tide that day. So there's familiarity as well, Oshin. It's a really exciting game on paper. And of course, Brewster Park with that added capacity. It, it, it's, it's all very exciting ahead tomorrow night. Yeah. Do you feel, Sean, then that Donegal will have the edge going into this one, given the fact that they have an extra game under their belt? And they had a moment against Tyrone last time out where it could have slipped away from them altogether and they, and they let them back in. But their moments that you would reflect on if you were to be successful in your province that were, I suppose, uh, turning, uh, turning the tides in the championship? Oh, yeah, big time. And, and funny, I acknowledge that. I said, yeah, the, the, the preliminary round, I was interested in Frank noted that no, nobody ever wants to be in the preliminary round, but this year it was nearly an advantage, obviously, if you won it, because it's two competitive games. No matter what your opposition was, all the challenge games in the world still won't prepare you for a championship encounter, no matter what the opposition may be like on the other side. There's still more of a competitive edge to it. So, as you noted, that one over Armagh, that got the rustiness, I would have imagined, out of the team. Then the Tyrone, and that, uh, as you noted there, the 1-1 the maybe conceded towards the end that made it a, a more difficult encounter than what it should have been. 
but that come off the back of having already been out there and getting that game under your belt and preparing for it. And you're right, Frank, yeah, the, the, in Bally Buffet that day when Donegal looked all but certain to be making their way through the minor championship and it was Monaghan then that, that stole their thunder and they went on to win it in 2018, 2019 with their minor teams. They contested the 2020 final back a number of weeks ago against Derry and just lost out on that one as well. So the, the one thing about this Monaghan team and these minors coming through, 2013, obviously, they make the breakthrough with the minors. They went on to win then the, the under 21 or the under 20, it was under 21 championship I think after that in 2015 and now they've done it again, they've progressed their minors again into what will be a competitive team and, and there is a, a, a lot of people thinking this is the team that will go all the way in Ulster again, obviously Donegal are standing in the way and want to be the ones that stop them but they're, they're carrying that success through sometimes you'll see it, a team could be good at un, minor and it, it doesn't always transfer up to the next grade but Monaghan have had the tendency with their minor teams, with their development to be able to do that. But you're missing three big players who you are, Sean. Mulligan, Gallagher yeah. and Jones, they were key. And everything that Monaghan done up through the age groups um, from Bunkrana Cup right up in to, to, to the minor championship, they are three, not to say big names, more like massive names that, that are missing because they're three of the top four players probably that, that, that Monaghan have. And you can add on Jason Irwin there who will be playing. They're probably the top four, I think it's fair to say, at this age group. And you're missing three of them. You are indeed, yeah. Well, I suppose you're giving up Aaron Mulligan to be part of your senior team. He's already featured against Fermanagh and, and shot the lights out on that day. He'll be obviously coming up against Armagh this weekend as well. Sean Jones was an injury concern. It was a calf injury. And if memory serves me well, I think it was against Donegal that day that he pulled up with that calf injury. So th there is talk that he may make a bench on Friday night because he didn't feature with the senior team last week make the bench if he's required maybe he could be pulled in if not then he can go and be available for the seniors then the, the following day and Carl Gallagher then as well and again I think it was an injury concern possibly there but he has been around the fringes end of the senior panel also too but but that's good for Mona. And yes, obviously, you don't want them to be taken and missing away from your under-20 team. But it's great to see that them lads have progressed then into your senior team also. And you know that they're Jason Irwin. And he was one of the, one of the big threats that, that came to Derry uh, the last weekend. But I'm looking as well then. And I was just, whenever you, you see the team again and, and, and move them on from that that last time on, on, on 2018, Donica Swinburne in there, Michael Meehan's in there, Shane Slevin, who's also a dual player. He, he played in the under-20s last Friday. He lined out for Monaghan in the Laurie Maher against Longford on the Saturday. And I'd envisage he's going to do the same again this weekend. He'll be with the under-20s on Friday. And Monaghan hurlers are out on Saturday in a Laurie Maher quarterfinal. And I can envisage again that he'll be out doing that dual play over the course of the weekend as well. So, yes, Monaghan may be missing three of the four. But they, they still have a very strong team there on paper when you look at it. Particularly backboned by that minor success of 2018. What about the strength of Donegal, Frank? How do you see this Donegal team? You've watched them in both matches, so you have, and you've seen the good and the bad combined, but who's been standing out from you from, from a Donegal point of view? I think the collective, Oshin, has been the thing that's impressed me most. They're an incredibly fit team. They're working really hard, and Gary Duffy, along with, obviously, Eamon McGee and Leo McLoon, have a very defined system as where they're moving. I mean, they're defending in numbers, they're attacking in numbers. Other years, you would probably pick out standout, exceptional players on the likes of a Michael Murphy or Pat McBrady or Ray McHugh over the years. But what I like about this here side is that there seems to be a real collective and unison in their effort. And listen, they're definitely less for quality. I mean, Shane O'Donnell is a chip off the older block of Brother Nile, plays in that same position at number 11, drops deep, you know, works the ball through the hands, gets scores. The two boys up front, Parrot McGettigan and Johnny McGrady, are probably chief score getters. Jamie Grant uh, from the Terman Club, who I think is an exceptional player with a very big future ahead of him. He had his hands full in the first quarter of the last night against Oren Robinson from Tyrone, who is probably as big an under-20 or under-21 as I've seen or developed under-20 in a long, long time. He was simply massive, got black carded. Jamie came more into the game, and that was a crucial period too when Tyrone went down to 14 men for the black yard. Obviously, Dahi Roberts, I gave man the match to last week against Tyrone, simply because the Tyrone pack, I thought, were much more physical, much further down the track in terms of S&C, but it was Dahi Roberts that was able to pick those small pockets uh, in behind midfield, maybe in between the half-forward and half-back lines. It just allowed Donegal players to run on to ball chest height, and it's a huge thing 
when the margins are so tight in Ulster football. And again, I'm not making any difference between senior or under 20 is a serious level. And when you have that in your goalkeeping locker, the Guidor man, that's a huge plus for Donegal. So those couple of players, obviously Owen Dowling had one two as well, has an eye for goal. Very good, very impressed with him. Uh, Jack Goller, sticky in the corner. Keelan McColgan, sticky. It's, it's a nice balance, but I think it's the strategy and the setup that that stacked Donegal management team are bringing to the equation that's making a big difference as well. Uh, Frank, I know we, we said it earlier that it's a bit of an unknown quantity going into the championship, um, but what sort of game are you expecting off the back of what you've seen and heard of, of what Monaghan can present to the table? Are, are they going to have another sort of physical like what, what Tyrone brought to the table? Well, Mona had 2 9 the last day against Derry. I know it's only one game, and we're talking about a side that, you know, have minor championships under their belt. That's 11 scores. I suppose I look at Donegal's 117 against a poor RMA side, you know, that's 18 scores. Donegal kicked 112 against a good Tyrone side. I don't think, I mean, the handbrake's off across the board. We've seen that there on Sunday in the senior game, Donegal and Derry sides are opening up and they are playing that bit more. I hope it is as open and as end-to-end as the Donegal-Tyrone game was because it was absorbing, really, really enjoyable. Again, people might look at the scoreline 112 to 19 and maybe label it, you know, or put it in a certain pigeonhole in a certain box. But it, it was fascinating stuff and it was exciting. It, it was end end. As I said, Donegal seemed to defend numbers, seemed to break in numbers. And their kick out strategy, you know, they'll put a full press on. They aren't scared to press up on the opposition team. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, the Monaghan stopper, Ryan Farley. You know, I don't know too much about him. I'm just wondering, obviously, maybe working along with Rory Began at senior level. Yeah. I'm sure if he's an understudy there, he's bound to have. You know, pretty goalkeeping at this minute. It's, it's off the charts. The the level and the ability that we're seeing from from kickouts and that again that goes from under twenty up to senior. The practice that must be going in. So those wee small margins, as you see, an unknown knockout competition. The two goalkeepers are going to have as big a say in this game as anyone. It's going to be very interesting to see. And um, maybe Sean will know or enlighten us a bit more whether there was a full on press from the Monaghan side on the dairy kick in the last night because there was from Donegal. It was brave, it was bold, it was ballsy, but you know it paid off for them because, as I said, under the breaking ball, they were ravenous and they just gobbled that there up. Well, was that the case, Sean? Yeah, no, well, it's interesting just yeah, what Frank said there. Uh, no, Monaghan, the majority of kickouts come out round the middle of the field, and interestingly enough, Derry probably would have claimed a lot of those. Monaghan were, were happy to step back, nearly invite Derry in, and then hit them on the counter. And you noted there about Ryan Farley, the keeper, a carbon copy of, of Rory Began, as you said. He's just taken does he go to the opposition 45, does he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, two or three times he was up the field oh. and was on commentary duty. The next thing I could just see this. This, this sweep of blue going by me and he was going, there goes Ryan again and he goes up, he takes the 45s. Now, he didn't have much success at 45s but there, there was a stiff breeze blowing against him and, and he was kicking them that they were hanging in the air more than driving through them like what Rory would do but uh, he's definitely did the hue of the sweeper keeper coming out. It's interesting, you know, there, I think Shane O'Donnell you said is the, is the centre half forward. The two centre or the two left back or the half backs for Mon and Dara McInerney and Brent Nogdoffy and I can envisage Ogie will be the one that will be picking up Shane O'Donnell because that's a role that he's always given and they are just set on one thing going the opposite way up the field the amount of play that Monon would have taken up those channels left and right rather than working it through the middle was very telling like and Brenton O'Duffy and Darren McInerney would be known for that play both at club level and when Brenton was with, with the, the minors, indeed Darrow's with the minors as well, that they were renowned for that. They're, they're, they're similar to your Carl O'Connell, Ryan McInespy type player, probably a little bit stronger, but carry an awful lot of pace uh, up those wings. So I, I, I can envisage that's where Mermona and maybe will try to negate what they know. And, and again, just listening to Frank and doing the wee bit of research, it's a big, physical, strong Donegal team. Yeah, Frank. The last time a Donegal team played Monaghan, uh, we conceded four goals. I'm not expecting that sort of situation now. We come Friday night again. I don't think so. No. Well, I hope not. Anyway, it's it's as we said, the National Football League. Is, football has. I was chat, interested in chatting to Mark McHugh yesterday for the preview ahead of Donegal and Tyrone. He's just said people talking about you know transition and change in football. He says it's been lightning fast over the last year or two. So sides are still kind of there's a bit of an identity crisis out there. With, with some with some teams, but I think at under-20 level, particularly with so much at stake in a knockout competition, lads moving on and, and coming out of grades, I think there's a wee bit more caution that, you know, 
the back door isn't open completely allow allowing sides to run through like that there there is sort of that old maybe you know defined defensive maybe counter-attacking system that that's what i've seen from donegal the last day but and maybe it's 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 a caveat but it's a small one and it was the fact that uh shana donald actually departed the donegal game later on against her own when it was still in the melting pot and so there's was a, that a surprise call by, by by gary duffy for you it wasn't a tactical call. The uh, young Adon was obviously feeling something. Mm-hmm. Kind of batted away questions afterwards, and it wasn't asked a third time. So um, on Gary's Zoom this week, he said he's got a clean bill of health. But, I mean, we all know that means absolutely nothing. So come closer to the game. It'll be interesting. Personally, I think because he's got that there, you know, he's got you know, 15, 20, 21 players he trusts. I think maybe Nile or sorry, Shane had ran himself under the ground. I think it was a matter of you know taking him off and putting another lad in there because as we've seen with Derry, the last day the seniors didn't have a bench, wilted in the last 10 minutes. Football now, you need 7 and 18, 19, 20 men to see you over, which will be 60 minutes in the under 20 game uh on Friday night. You need those options. Option coming off the bench are the last 10 minutes players drain. Yeah, okay. Um we're coming to the close to the end here, Sean. No identity crisis around Monaghan, is there? No, no, no. And it's interesting there. You talked about the four goals, obviously, at senior level. Monaghan, they got two goals and they could have had another two or three on top of that. Jason Irwin, in particular, is one of those players. He just excites. The minute he gets the ball, you're, you're, you're rising out of your seat to see what's he going to do here or what, what what's opening up for him. And he was similar to a minor that we have at the moment, Michael Hamill. There's very few players that do that to you, that the minute they get on the ball, anywhere on the field, you're rising, wondering what's he going to do here. And Jason himself admitted afterwards he, he did maybe butcher one or two or miss on one or two opportunities. So I, I, there'll be goals and it could come down to a goal being the difference between the sides on the night. Finally, are we expecting a really, really tight game, Sean? Oh, I think so. Yeah, and, and listening just to Frank there again, and, and just getting the feel of what this Donegal team is going to bring. I, they're going to probably be similar in their setup and how they work and operate. I, the, the physicality, maybe. I think that by the sounds of Donegal, could be just a, a, a bigger, more physical team, maybe than what Monaghan is now. Monaghan I have. Big lads in there, and Joel Wilson and Gavin McPhillips in the middle of the field. As I noted, that Dara McAlerney and Brent Noak Duffy then are, are just that that pace that they bring into the game. Ryan Farley is so commanding in his area as well as, as a goalkeeper. So, and I know you'd noted the goalkeeper from Tony Goldbean similar also as well. It, it's going to be fascinating. I, I, it'll come down to a score between them, and I, I just hope it comes at like a Paddy McBrearty maybe done at the weekend there, that it's a winning score coming off the boot rather than coming off a mistake. Yeah, and just, uh, Frank, back to you. I think it's fair to say whoever comes out of this, you're going to have a favourites tie, Gary, for the final? Yeah, without a doubt. I think they'll carry a huge momentum into it, but no, no different than Sean. It's, I think it's a 50-50 game. I don't know if you can call it recent history, but that, that minor game that we alluded to in 2018, all these wee things, you, you know, they're small nuggets and small things that, I think underage players carry with them. All that Donegal panel, I remember that there. From that there year, bitter disappointment because I think it was double disappointment that day, Osh, and I think Donegal might have been beat by Tyrone as well yeah. in the senior game. So, listen, variables are very, very interesting, but you're right. <laughs> I think whoever wins this game will be favourites to go on and win the competition, but at the same time, let's just get over the line on uh, Friday night and, and worry about that after. Yeah, before we finish up, Sean, I'm going to go back to you because it's, it's just dropped into my mind about Down, this current under-20 Down team. There was talk yeah. last week that this is a seriously um, very, very good football team and they'll give yeah. any of the Northwest counties a real, real rattling, including Monaghan as well. And some are quietly suggesting that they're in the background and they're moving their way through the rounds. Now, they do take on Fermanagh, but this Down team could be the surprise of the championship. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. It's interesting, our, our co-commentator that would work on all things, Calvin, Damien Dunn, who is the manager of the Calvin under-20 team. And I know the work and preparation they put into that game. And obviously, they, they, they were well beaten. And I was talking to Damien afterwards. He could not get over the pace and power of the down team. He says, I had my homework done, he says, but even at that, he couldn't get over when he seen them. All the video analysis and everything done, he couldn't get over what they brought to the field. And an interesting thing, I suppose, to highlight, Donegal still in the championship. Monaghan's still in a championship. So you, you, you're kind of dividing loyalties between what players are available for senior and for your under 20. Down or out of senior, so all players is available that can be available at under 20. And I get the feeling 
that don't want to have something to show for work and effort and they're putting all their eggs in a basket for this under-20 championship. And I think you're right, they could be the team there, the one that everybody will be watching. Obviously, our interest is on Friday night in, in Brewster, but down, I think, confidently and quietly confident could be thinking this is their year. Okay. Well, the interesting thing there, Oshin is actually, you know, a Fermanagh with Mark McHugh involved are in opposition. So if, even if Fermanagh don't come through there, and hopefully Mark and the boys do it, but a very heavy favourites down, you know, there could be some interesting telephone calls made between the likes of uh, Eamon McGee, Leo McLoon and Mark McHugh towards Bavin, you know, to get some information. But as we said, purely from a Donegal perspective, hopefully Mark and Fermanagh get over the line there. Okay, we look forward to the weekend's action. Sean McCaffrey of Northern Sound FM and Frank Craig of the Donegal News. Many thanks for joining us on our preview of the Ulster Under-20 semi-final. Thank you, Washington. Cheers, Washington.